Recently, six scientists, after being part of an experiment which simulated the isolation that future space travelers might experience traveling to and living on Mars, said that their biggest challenge was boredom. Welcome to boredom, memorably described by Tolstoy as the desire for desires, commonly experienced, rarely thought about, and scientifically little understood. In 1990, when James Tankard was 18, his older brother Paul crashed his car into a tree. He was pulled from the wreckage with multiple injuries including head trauma. The recovery proved difficult. Paul had been a drummer, but even after a broken wrist had healed, drumming no longer made him happy. Paul used to complain bitterly that he was just bored. A few years later, when Tankard was training to become a clinical neuropsychologist, he found himself working with about 20 young men who had also suffered traumatic brain injury. Thinking of his brother, he asked them whether they too got bored more easily than they had before. And every single one of them said yes. Since then, studies have suggested that people who report feeling more boredom than normal are likely to have an injured or underdeveloped frontal cortex the part of the brain which plays a crucial role in self-control and self-regulation. Interestingly, the frontal cortex also controls our perception of time, which could be linked to the sensation of time passing more slowly when we are bored. Everyone knows what boredom feels like, but science has only begun to understand what makes people bored. There is not even a scientific consensus of what boredom exactly is. One reason lies in rooting out the source of boredom, as boredom can arise from both external or internal stimuli. But scientists do know something about the brain activity in high-risk boredom-prone people. When we experience joy and excitement in a new situation, a chemical messenger or neurotransmitter called dopamine triggers that response in our brains. It appears that boredom-prone people may have naturally lower levels of dopamine, meaning that they require a heightened sense of novelty to stimulate their brains. But how to combat this elusive pest? Previously, it was thought that people who react more negatively to boredom would have specific brain waves prior to being bored. But then it was found that it was only when they were in a state of boredom that the difference in the brain waves surfaced. That means that experiencing boredom is related to how a person reacts to a situation, which in turn means that people can be taught coping mechanisms to avoid those responses. It's been suggested that reflecting on boring tasks might help them make less tedious. Mindfulness training can also help a person dive deeper into the meaning of a task that on the surface seems dull. For example, a bricklayer whose job is to, well, lay bricks for hours on end may become more stimulated once they consider the importance of the task as the very foundation of the building or why he or she took the job in the first place. People often try to alleviate their boredom with brief distractions including work breaks or doing laundry. But they hardly work. Studies have shown that people who meditated, engaged with other people or even the ones who accepted the boredom were more successful in getting rid of it. Meaning that those with a higher capacity for self-control are less likely to experience boredom. Finding new interests, hobbies and physical exercise have also shown to reduce boredom. But when searching for an activity, psychologists recommend finding an optimal amount of ease and challenge, called flow. Many people have heard that smart kids who aren't challenged enough may become bored and can misbehave. But research also suggests that students who feel too challenged in school could also wind up feeling bored. In essence, flow means getting into a groove. Doing tasks that demand skill or agility, but at an intensity low enough that you can reap the mental rewards of accomplishing a task. Boredom is a universal experience and it also has its benefits. It can be seen as a call to action. Every emotion has an evolutionary purpose. And although a constant search for neural stimulation that isn't satisfied does seem pointless, but imagine a world where we did not get bored at all. 
constantly excited by everything. Raindrops falling, the conflicts at breakfast time, traffic lights at the signal. Boredom makes people keen to engage in activities that they would find more meaningful than those at hand. We all need a little boredom in life. Set aside a day and avoid any stimulating activities that can flood your brain with high amounts of dopamine. Try to have as little fun as possible. You won't use internet, phone or computer. You're not allowed to listen to music or eat any sweets or junk food. This will remove all sources of external pleasures for your brain and help you embrace boredom. It will starve you of all the pleasures you're used to getting and help your dopamine receptors relax for a day, which in turn makes less satisfying or less dopamine producing activities more desirable than before. Boredom can also stimulate creativity as once you start daydreaming and allow your mind to wander, you start thinking beyond the conscious and into the subconscious. But why even study boredom? There are things all around us that we don't think to look at, maybe because they appear trivial. But boredom has been associated with plenty of negative outcomes, including low academic performance, high dropout rates, mistakes on the job, depression, anxiety, and a lowered sense of life purpose. As philosophers have remarked, boredom really is the root of all evil. Because boredom is such a motivating force that people do all kinds of things to ease the pain. The chronically bored are at a higher risk for drug addiction, alcoholism and compulsive gambling. Generating knowledge about boredom through research can help us inform about how to design our educational programs, structure our work environments, advise patients and clients and manage our day-to-day -day lives. If you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single video on our channel. As well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button below. We make content on a wide range of subjects and you can even suggest us the topics you want us to cover in the comment section below.